Well, listening to Brother Sean brings back memories for me too. I waited eight years longer than he did to get saved, to deal with the most important question in life. Where would I be if I were to die? But I remember as a boy of 16, sitting in my father's house in, my, in Sarnia, I was reading a gospel paper, but I had it behind another book because I didn't want anyone to know what I was reading. The name on the track was Four Things God Wants You to Know. God wanted me to know that I was a sinner. I had heard that all my life, that I was a sinner. But everybody was a sinner. So it didn't really bother me too much. But that night I found out that because I was a sinner, I couldn't get into heaven. My sin was going to keep me out of heaven. Sin is something that was my problem. I was no angel, as our brother has said, as we look back over our time. But anyway, I came to the point where the last verse was 1 Peter 3 and 18. For Christ also has once suffered for sins. The just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. And I read that. And I remember, as it was yesterday, I closed the book. I put it on the sofa beside me. And I said, I'll just have to go to hell. Because I don't know how to believe. And I picked the book up again and I read, For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. And I thought, Jesus is the just one. I'm the unjust one. Jesus died for me. I accepted him at his word and believed on what he said. And I have the assurance as my brother that my guilty past is removed, that I have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have that peace tonight? Do you have a time in your life that you could go back to when you said, yes, I deserve to go to hell, but Jesus died for me. It's a personal thing. It's not something that you can Say, oh, well, you know, everybody else but me needs. You need this time in your life. You need to have your sins forgiven. You need to come to the Lord Jesus and trust him as your savior. The verse that I've been thinking about tonight is found in Amos 4 and 12. Amos 4, verse 12. Here's what it says. I'm really just thinking of the last few words. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto you, prepare to meet your God. And so I would ask you, as I begin to speak for a few minutes, have you made any preparation for eternity? This little map tells us where we are. Could you locate yourself? Could you come up and put an X on the map where you are? It's easy to say, you know, everybody's a sinner. But have you ever had a time in your life when you realize I need to prepare to meet God. John has told you how he prepared. I came just the same way. And I received the Lord Jesus as my savior. He died for me. I deserve to pay for my sins, but he paid. So I go free. Let's look then at the reason why you need to be saved. And I think we could find that in Romans chapter 5. 
Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Have you ever made this verse personal to yourself? Have you ever honestly from your heart said, God, I'm the sinner. God is not far removed. He's right here listening to talk to you. You can talk to him just as I'm talking to you now. Or you don't even have to talk out loud. But God is interested in you, my friend. He has interest that you might come and know him experimentally. Prove him in your daily life. Know your sins forgiven. Have peace and satisfaction through the work that the Lord Jesus did at Calvary. But your sin has separated you from God. You're not in his family. You're on the wrong road. These are all similes that God has given us to try and make us understand our great need. Your greatest need tonight is the same need my brother and myself had, is to have your sins forgiven. To have a knowledge that I'll be in heaven forever because of what Jesus did. There are really only two religions in the world. People are either doing something to go to heaven. Or they're depending on something that has been done. What are you depending on tonight? It's not your believing that takes you to heaven. It's the Lord Jesus' work at Calvary. Your sins have separated you from God. He can't hear you because of your sin. Your sin needs to be forgiven. The songwriter put it this way. My sin was as high as a mountain. They all disappeared in the fountain. That's the blood that Jesus shed. He wrote my name down for a palace and crown. And praise his dear name, I am free. Sin is the problem of everyone in this meeting tonight and everyone in the world. God says all have sinned. All have come short of the glory of God. And unless your sin is forgiven, you cannot get into heaven. Jesus said, if you die in your sins, where I am, you cannot come. And Jesus is in heaven. And if you die with your sins unforgiven, you will meet him as your judge. And the verdict will be, these shall go away into everlasting punishment. My dear friends, there is a real hell. Just as there is real sin, there is a real place called hell. There are real people there. They're going to be there until they stand at that great white throne. Until they have the books opened and their name not found written. And they're sent into the lake of fire. And that's for eternity. This is the most urgent matter you will ever face. This is the biggest problem you will ever have to deal with, my friend, your sin. Your sin needs to be forgiven because it's against God and it will keep you out of heaven. When do you need to get your sins forgiven? Well, we can see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. I'm sorry, verse 2. And he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. In the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Who can guarantee us that they'll be here tomorrow? We heard of Sean's sister die. Three people die every second. 
They're not all old people. Children die. Middle-aged people die. Old people die. And then they go to meet God. It's appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. The time for you to get saved is now. Would you be prepared to stand at the back and wait for everyone to leave the building tonight to talk with Sean? Not that he can save you, but he can point you to the Savior, the one who's finished the work. You see, the hymn writer put it this way. Scripture just leaves me. Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. He's looking for lost people, people that will be honest to admit, I have sinned. I deserve punishment. I deserve to go to hell. That's where I'm going. And God will show you now is the time of salvation. This is the most important thing you will ever face. This is the biggest decision you will ever make in your life. What are you going to do with Jesus, which is called Christ? Tonight he is inviting you. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. He gives satisfaction. He gives peace. He gives wonderful joy to know my sin. Oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, was nailed to his cross. And I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Friend, do you have a time in your life? A moment when you realized I am lost. I was a guilty sinner. I am a guilty sinner. But Jesus died for sinners. Jesus died for me. First Corinthians 15 and 3. Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures. He was buried. And he rose again the third day. According to the scriptures. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Friend, if you ever plan on being in heaven, you need to make preparation. You may need to acknowledge your sin. You need to admit to God, yes, I'm guilty. I deserve punishment. I deserve to go to hell. That's the hardest thing I ever did, my friends. To admit to God, God, if you do what's right with me, you'll put me in hell. That's what I deserve. And as soon as I was honest, he showed me what he had done. He had made preparation. He had given his only son. The Lord Jesus Christ is eternal. He had no future, no past. Excuse me, he had no beginning. He is eternal. He will be eternal. He will have no end. And the Bible says the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. He didn't come to show us how to live. He didn't come to give us a new creed. He came to die. He came that he might go to Calvary's cross. His visage marred more than any man's, the crown of thorns upon his brow, his back plowed like a plowed field, spiked alive to Calvary's cross. The hymn writer put it this way, behold, behold the Lamb of God on the cross. For us, he shed his precious blood on the cross, oh, here is all important cry. 
Eli, Lama, Sabachthani, draw near and see the Savior die on the cross. Why did he die on the cross? He died for sin, but he had no sin. He was holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners. But he died the just one for the unjust ones, that he might bring them to God. My friend, if you would be honest tonight with yourself and with God and admit I have sinned, I deserve punishment. And if I die the way I am, I'm going to get it forever. God could be just and righteous and show you what Jesus has done. He died for sinners. He paid what sinners could never pay. Three hours of suffering at the hand of God. God clothed the scene in darkness and he dealt with his own son for sin that was not the Lord Jesus. God punished him for your sin. And Jesus is inviting you tonight. Come, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He wants you to accept him at his word. He wants you to rely on his promise. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Will you come just as you are? Will you admit, God, I'm just a sinner? That's the hard part. I'm just a sinner. I deserve to go to hell. But I understand Jesus died for sinners. My dear friend, tonight you have a great, great choice to make. I was thinking earlier of the man who was hiking. He was up getting eagle's eggs. He stood on the edge of the cliff and he dropped his rope over the edge to the nest, which was way right down there. He slid down the rope and landed in the nest. He put the eggs in his pocket. He realized the rope had come loose. His net tied to it, there was no swimming off. And he looked, and the rope was swinging like this. The rope wasn't coming as close every time. If I don't get this rope this time, this is my last chance. He got the rope and he got out of the field. But that's what the gospel is. It's to tell you that this could be the last opportunity. This could be your last invitation from the Lord Jesus Christ as he stands with the old pierced hand and says, come unto me. I will give you rest. He's already paid for sin. Your sin has been forgiven. God forgave everyone. It's not a limited salvation. It's only av not available just to people that come here. It's available for the world. Provision is adequate for all to come. Will you come? That's what the hymn writer said. Will you come? Will you come with your poor broken heart, burdened and sin oppressed? Lay it down at the feet of the Savior and Lord. Jesus will give you rest. Just come as you are. Don't try to clean yourself up. Just be honest with God. God, I have sinned. I deserve punishment. But I realize Jesus died for sinners. Thank you. I realize he died for me. May God bless you, my friend. This is a limited time offer. It may not be available at 7.30 tonight. It's available now. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation.